Minister for Health. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I present the Dental Benefits Amendment Bill 2012 and the explanatory memorandum. The clerk. First reading, a bill for an act to amend the law relating to dental benefits and for related purposes. Minister for Health has the call. I move that this bill be now read a second time. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, since I came into this parliament, um, I've been talking about the importance of better dental health for all Australians. And uh, over the course of my work as a member of parliament, as a local member, and certainly in my time as health minister, I've seen so many examples of the importance of better teeth uh, for Australians. One of the um, very early uh, constituent issues I had that stayed with me, really has stayed with me throughout my career, was a woman who um, ha had had a very difficult life. She had been a victim of domestic violence, single mum now with two kids, living in public housing in my electorate. And her son had, uh, against um, many hurdles, won a scholarship to a very prestigious school in Sydney. Um, she was contacted, in fact, she didn't contact me herself, her neighbour contacted me and said she can't go with him on his first day because she doesn't have any teeth. She's too embarrassed, she doesn't want to humiliate her son by turning up with um, her teeth had been extracted and the new uh, dentures she was having to wait for months and months because she was relying on the public dental system. And that story has always stayed with me because it was such a strong um, message to me about the, the way that uh, bad teeth can exclude you not just from getting a job, not just from economic participation, but also from social participation, the normal social interactions that uh, people should be able to take for, it, for granted. I have heard so many stories about um, older people not wanting to go out for afternoon tea with their friends because they're worried about uh, not being able to chew the food that's on the table. I've seen so many children, including in my own electorate, with little brown stumps instead of teeth where their, their baby teeth haven't been taken care of. And, uh, you know, some people think that it doesn't matter, their baby teeth. In fact, um, Senator Lynn Thorpe told me uh, Deputy Speaker, that um, in her early days, she met a young girl. She she was uh, who said um, she said to this young woman, "You know, you've got to start looking after your teeth." This girl used to have a packet of hot chips for lunch one day and a tub of ice cream for lunch the next day. She alternated. And um, Senator Thorpe said to her, "You're going to have to start looking after those teeth. Um, you know, you, you can't allow them to fall out." And the girl said, "Well, I lost one lot and they grew back." She thought that she'd just keep getting new teeth if the old ones rotted away. We've got a huge challenge in Australia to ensure that our oral health opportunities are as strong as the opportunities we have to look after the rest of our bodies. For many decades, the dental health of our kids has been improving. But in fact, since the 1990s, we've started to see a reversal of that trend. Since the late 1990s, the prevalence of child caries and the mean number of teeth affected by dental disease in children has increased. A recent Australian Institute of Health and Welfare report showed that 45% of 12-year-olds had decay in their permanent teeth and almost 25% of 12-year-olds had untreated decay. If a decline in oral health of children becomes established, we're going to see the need for increased services in the future. Investment in our children's teeth is an investment in the future. We know that poor childhood oral health leads to poor adult oral health. You're not going to have bad teeth as a kid and get good teeth as an adult. This has wide-ranging impacts, not just on dental health, but of course on general health and well-being, including, uh, in the worst cases, increasing demand on our hospital system. So today I am very proud to be introducing the first step in the legislative process that will make almost three and a half million Australian children eligible for taxpayer supported dental care. Mm -hmm. The child dental benefit schedule is one part of the dental health reform package 
an unprecedented package of initiatives to address increasingly poor oral health among Australians, including our children, low-income adults and those living in outer metropolitan, rural and remote areas. The six-year package that I announced on the 29th of August includes $2.7 billion for around 3.4 million Australian children to be eligible for subsidised dental care. $1.3 billion will be for around 1.4 million additional services for adults, low-income earners who will have better access to dental care in the public system and $225 million will be for dental capital and workforce measures aimed to provide expanded services for people living in outer metropolitan areas, regional, rural and remote areas. While Medicare and free hospital treatment have been a basic right for Australians for decades, millions of people in this country still go without adequate dental care. I believe we have a responsibility to ensure that Australians who are least able to afford to go to the dentist, particularly children, should be given access to taxpayer-supported oral health care. As I've travelled around Australia to discuss the dental reform package with parents, with young people and with dental professionals, I've listened to so many stories of children in need of dental care and the great work that dentists, public and private, are doing to repair young mouths prevent further harm and keep young people healthy. This bill will see the Commonwealth Government taking its share of this important work. This bill will establish a child dental benefits schedule for children from the age of two until they turn 18. Access to the schedule will commence on 1 January 2014 and will effectively see the Commonwealth assume primary responsibility of funding basic dental services for children in families receiving family tax benefit part A. Funding will be targeted in line with current Medicare teen dental plan eligibility. This will target expenditure to children in low and middle income families. That means that benefits will be available for children who receive, uh, or in households that receive, payments under family tax benefit part A, AB study, carer payment, disability support pension, parenting payment, special benefit, youth allowance, double orphan pension, the Veterans Children Education Scheme or the Military Rehabilitation and Compensation Act Education and Training Scheme. So currently a family of two parents and two kids can be earning as high as $112,000 to be eligible for Family Tax Benefit Part A. But of course eligibility will vary um, depending on indexation at the time and depending on the number of children in the family. The Child Dental Benefit Schedule will provide a benefit for basic dental services, including prevention and treatment. Subsidised services will include, for example, checkups, fillings, extractions. However, items like orthodontics will not be included. The proposal will provide a Commonwealth-funded capped benefit entitlement of $1,000 over two years for basic dental services for children that could be used for services in the private sector where most dentists practice. The states and territories would also be able to provide services, as they currently do, under the Medicare Teen Dental Plan, as long as they bulk bill those services. That means that parents and independent teens will be able to continue to visit their usual dentist, provided that that dentist participates in the scheme. Including the public system will leverage existing state resources, provide a guaranteed no-cost pathway for those who really need it, and allow states to continue to provide services to children if they choose to do so. Benefits would be available for services provided by dentists and paradental professionals like oral health therapists and dental hygienists, as currently provided for by the Medicare Teen Dental Plan. The level of this $1,000 cap is designed to allow coverage for higher needs children, but the average amount spent per child is expected to be lower. This bill is a first step in implementing this government's dental reforms. Further detail on the scheme, including the schedule of services and fees, will be contained in subordinate legislation. In designing the fee schedule under the Child Dental Benefits Schedule, 
I'll consult with oral health professionals <coughs> to ensure that it contains an appropriate mix of basic dental services. I'll also seek to ensure that the access to the schedule by professionals and the fee structure will encourage appropriate levels of servicing and the matching of workforce capability with oral health need. Although states and territories currently provide services to children through the public sector, eligibility and service availability is not consistent across all states and territories. The introduction of a Commonwealth-funded child dental benefit schedule would build a unified national system for patient eligibility and service delivery, replacing disparate state and territory public dental schemes for children. Focusing Commonwealth funding on children through the child dental benefit schedule will address declining child oral health and will be a cost-effective, longer-term strategy to deliver improved population-wide oral health into the future. As part of the dental reform package, the Gillard government is providing $1.3 billion to states and territories under a national partnership agreement to expand public dental services for low-income adults, including pensioners and concession card holders and those with special needs. This funding will depend on the states and territories at least maintaining their current level of dental care services. In addition, $225 million in funding for dental infrastructure in outer metro, rural and regional areas will assist more Australians, regardless of their location, to gain access to high quality dental care. As part of implementing the dental health reform package, the Howard government's chronic disease dental scheme will be closed. Unlike the initiatives in the dental reform package, the chronic disease dental scheme is poorly targeted and fails to address the problems in the existing dental system. This dental reform package is in addition to the $515 million announced in the 2012-13 budget, which includes a blitz on public dental waiting lists and additional dental training and support for people in rural and remote areas. Together with these measures, the dental reform package will deliver a better and fairer system of dental health care for Australians that is accessible, affordable and focuses on prevention to deliver future improvements in Australia's oral health. Um, Deputy Speaker, can I just take one final minute to say that the introduction of this children's dental scheme really represents the life work of many people in the dental health profession. Um, the members of the um, Dental Advisory Council that had advised me on how we might improve Australia's dental health system, um, many uh, public dentists across the country and private dentists who have campaigned for this and other oral health professionals, uh, academics, the staff of the Department of Health, um, in my own office, Kate Lee, so many people who have put so many years of thought and effort and fight into providing a system that will mean that the children of Australia will be able to get um, dental care that meets their needs for both prevention and treatment.